There is a moment Go. at the start of every mission Go. when everything Go. comes together. Go. A moment when years Go. of preparation and planning Go. are put to the test. Clear to proceed. There are no second chances. You have permission to launch. Success or failure is just a heartbeat away. Range green. A spacecraft and its rocket on the pad, fully fueled and ready to launch. Go Atlas. In that moment, a controlled explosion is released with such intense power, it can One. propel a spacecraft off the Earth and into space for the benefit of all. We call this moment T-0. This is its story. Atlas V and Noah's Gozes, a highly sophisticated weather-watching eye in the sky. This is no ordinary aircraft, and on board is no ordinary spacecraft. This C-5 Super Galaxy is hauling something special. It can carry what no other airplane can carry in the Air Force. Width, length, weight, you name it, it can get on that thing. This jet can do it like no other jet. Yeah, it's the biggest jet we've got, um, military has. Oh, what can you fit on it? I think it's easier to say what can't fit at this point. After two years of construction, at Lockheed Martin in Denver, and a few hours in the air, Noah's Goes S has finally made it to Kennedy Space Center in Florida, where the countdown to T zero begins. It's always exciting to bring a satellite down to the down to Kennedy Space Center and participate in that whole activity of getting a satellite ready for launch. Getting it out here and rolling it into launch processing facility that is a very big deal for us. It's one of the hugest milestones in any spacecraft program is ship. It's not easy to transport something like this across the country. And this is where the rubber meets the road. Uh, this is where all these people that have worked on this program for a couple years, it culminates into the excitement of getting ready for uh, what we call launch fever. And so now, you know, we get to kind of do some of the fun stuff, like put it on a giant airplane and take it to Kennedy Space Center, where uh, we get to prepare it to go onto a, an Atlas V launch vehicle and Launch. NASA's Launch Services Program is in charge of getting GOES-S into orbit, and the team has just a few months to do the final launch preps and inspections before T-Zero arrives. That's no easy task with a spacecraft of this size and complexity. In spaceflight, there are no second chances. It has to be perfect the first time. It's very exciting. I love being a part of this, and I love being able to contribute to the spacecraft and to its success. GOES-S is the second in a series of advanced weather satellites, part of an upgrade project NOAA is undertaking to modernize our forecasting ability and, ultimately, to save lives. We have a very young team, and this is some of them, this will be their first campaign. So we're trying to put the excitement into that, let them feel what it's like to touch the spacecraft for the last time. Launch operations is time we all get together for one goal, which is launch. But achieving that goal will not be easy. The journey to T-0 has just begun. There is only one cargo ship designed to transport rockets for United Launch Alliance, and tonight, it's pulling into Port Canaveral with the robust flight hardware of an Atlas V. We're a high-tech vessel, high maneuverability. We have to be because uh, we get into some tight areas on shallow rivers. The Delta Mariner is unique. It has uh, two aft Z drives coupled by computer with the uh, bow thrusters that turns 360 degrees on demand. ULA has work to do. In less than four weeks, the rocket must be safely delivered, inspected, and assembled in order to successfully launch NOAA's highly advanced GOES-S weather satellite. I sense from the crew the pride being part of this mission. And when I put this vessel alongside the dock, it, it is a, a very accomplished feeling that we all have. The arrival of the Mariner is the start of operations for the flow of a rocket. Teams from ULA and the Launch Services Program 
Start by unchaining the Atlas V booster and Centaur components, wasting no time in developing a plan and getting organized for transport. We're going to take the booster over to the ASOC. Um, it's going to be Convoy 1 to be the leader, followed by the booster, followed by the support. It's a very exciting day for the vehicle system engineers as we're offloading the uh, launch vehicle that will carry the GOSAS satellite. Here comes the Centaur second stage with its pressurized stainless steel tank as thin as a dime. Unable to support its own weight until fully fueled, it's carried off the ship by a specialized trailer. Next comes the Atlas V booster, all 106 feet of it. This booster and four solid rocket motors have one job, provide enough energy at liftoff for the entire launch vehicle and payload to overcome the pull of Earth's gravity. I never get tired of seeing the rockets come in. It's very exciting, especially on the Mariner. Now on land, a challenging cross-base transport lies ahead to the Atlas Space Flight Operations Center. Inside this multifunctional facility, crews will remove protective coverings, inspect the hardware, and install the final flight components. For now, this mission remains go, but the highly complex job of stacking the rocket is still to come. Three weeks until launch. It's zero dark 30 at Cape Canaveral Air Force Station. With a full week of intense rocket assembly activities ahead, the teams from Launch Services Program and United Launch Alliance are getting an early start. It all begins with the booster. This is the backbone of the Atlas V, and literally everything is riding on it. It's the largest component and the first to be lifted. So Launch Services Program partnered with United Launch Alliance to select the Atlas V41 vehicle because it is one awesome rocket and we need that thrust to get GOES-S to its geostationary orbit to meet its mission requirements. But it will take more than just the booster to get all the way to geostationary transfer orbit. That's why we're adding four solid rocket boosters. When you start with the Atlas booster, it's like 860,000 pounds of thrust with just the RD-180. So we need the solids for extra performance. We need it to get heavy payloads off the pad and for additional performance going to geosynchronous orbit or geotransfer. Mating the solids to the booster is a very hazardous operation. We have safety with us at all times. You have 100,000 pounds going up into the air and hanging on a crane. And oh, by the way, it's explosive. Once the solids are mounted, it's time to mate the Centaur. The Centaur is the upper stage, and it's, uh, it's tuned. It's, a, it's like a highly tuned race car. It's light, it's efficient, uh, it performs well for us. Here to brought you to the job and get it done right. Something else not right, bring it up to us. Let's get us a chance to fix it, okay? All right, girls, get to do this thing. Assembling a rocket can make or break any mission. It takes tremendous coordination and skill to get this job done. The team makes it look easy, but rocket science never is. The coolest part of my job is coming down here and seeing the hardware and knowing what it's capable of. We all get to work with rockets and it's really exciting and fun and everybody has their part in all of that. And yeah, when you're out with friends, you can say you're a rocket scientist. I do. <laughs> so there's really nothing quite like all, all the work and all the setup that we do to get ready to do this and get built up a rocket and tested to get to launch day. And when we get the teaser and the rocket lifts off and the control room rattles and shakes a little bit, it's an awesome feeling. That is the ultimate reward and that's really what makes us happy, what makes our customer happy, is putting our customer where they want to go in the right spot, in the exact right orbit. And that is, there's a lot of pride in that. With the Atlas V stacking complete, it's time to make the GOES S payload. Once aboard, this rocket will be ready to roll. Two weeks to T-0. Today is another huge milestone for 
Noah's Goes S mission. It's time for Goes S to suit up. So today we start something called encapsulation. Uh, by encapsulation, we, we actually put a container around the satellite. It's called a payload fairing. That payload fairing will protect the satellite for the first three and a half minutes of its mission. It sounds like a very short period of time, but in fact, you know, that's when we would have the maximum aerodynamic and acoustic loads on the satellite. So we're trying to protect the satellite. Right now, we really have tested everything we need to do to make sure this satellite is ready for launch. The next time we'll see this satellite is on orbit. Shielding the spacecraft is essential. Shooting off the launch pad like a bullet, this vehicle will rocket past the speed of sound in just over 30 seconds. Without this fairing, GOES-S wouldn't survive the journey into space. But for a satellite designed to work only in the vacuum of space, its time on Earth can be just as dangerous. Any exposure to dust or moisture could contaminate GOES-S and compromise the mission. That's why this fairing is more than just a suit of armor. It's also a portable clean room. With encapsulation complete, it's time to call in the K-Mag. This 72-wheel transport vehicle has what it takes to get this massive payload to the pad. The spacecraft hoisting mate to the launch vehicle today is a huge milestone for the whole operation. And this is the biggest integrated operation that we've had so far. And it goes all day, goes all night from transport and then hoist and mate, and it'll go into the evening tonight as they finish closeouts. After working through the night, LSP and ULA are almost there. Just 150 feet to go, straight up. Obstacles, we do have obstacles on the decks, on the K-Mag, so watch your step, walking area, trip hazards, and then uh, remember about your hard hats, chin straps. Any other questions? All right, let's go do this. There's a lot of moving parts involved with processing a spacecraft, processing a rocket, and then bringing them together for a launch. We have a lot of hard timelines that we have to meet and deadlines that we have to meet, and everybody works as hard as they can to meet those deadlines, and sometimes we have to work around the clock to meet those. We've reached a critical point on the road to T-Zero. GOES-S is now mated to the Atlas V. We've been working for several years integrating this thing. We've completed that now. We've got the satellite on top and we're ready to go. With all major milestones complete, this rocket is ready to roll. Twenty-four hours to T-Zero. It's go time. This engineer, proceed with the MLP transport to pad. Roger. You can feel the excitement in the air. The GOES-S launch window opens tomorrow. ULA and LSB have one last critical procedure to complete. Get the entire Atlas V stack and its mobile launch platform to the pad. That's a lot of hardware. It is a fairly challenging activity if you think about moving a one and a half million pound mobile launch platform and vehicle out to the pad. Once it gets there, it will be loaded with rocket fuel and be ready to start the terminal count to T-Zero. Years of intensive planning and coordination are finally rolling to the pad, and the majesty of the Atlas V is on display as it inches its way to lift off. The thrill of seeing that Atlas vehicle, all 197 feet of it, rolling up to the pad, is, it's just really exciting because I know that means tomorrow is launched. GOES-S is particularly important because of how it's transforming our capability to predict weather and protect lives and property. And I can't wait for it to launch tomorrow and become operational. So great to be here after a number of years of seeing the spacecraft come together and all the instruments integrated onto the spacecraft. Our baby is it tucked in and ready for launch tomorrow. This is the LC on one performing pretest briefing. This operation is classified hazardous. Cryogenics will be loaded. ALC verify count to start at 1947 Zulu. Verified. Proceeding with the count. We're launching today and the ULA team got on console a few hours ago turn power on the rocket and we are counting down to T-Zero right now. 
I'm on my way over to the uh, ASOC, the Atlas Space Flight Operations Center, where the Mission Director Center and the Launch Control Center are located. And if the range is clear and the rocket is good, we're go for today. I love launch day. I'm so fortunate to work with a great team. Our team gets so incredibly excited to do missions and it all culminates today. Status check to proceed with terminal count. Atlas systems, go. Centaur systems, go. Ground, go. Facility, go. RFFTS, go. Flight control, go. Range coordinator, clear to proceed. Launch director, you have permission to launch. Proceeding with the count. ALC verified T0 is set for 2202 Zulu. Verified. Rock report range status. Range green. Status check. Go Atlas. Go Centaur. Range operations controller reports range green. Everything is go. Five, four, three, two, one. and mission success for GOES S and this cutting edge weather capability that our nation will now have. After spacecraft separation, NOAA is standing by to start spacecraft checkouts and begin operations. T minus three. Engine start. Two, one. 